Thank you very, very much for joining us again. I have Brian from Ecom Dash. We're going to be talking about some killer services for sellers, how Ecom Dash can help you with management, uh, with inventory management, with orders, with shipping, um, handling the, this sort of niche market to help sellers concentrate on what you do best, which is finding products that are going to sell very, very well, and then farming out things that other people can just do better. And I believe tremendously in doing that. Focus on your strengths and then use outside companies who specialize in certain areas. So, so Brian, introduce yourself, tell a little bit about yourself, how you ended up in this space, and then we're gonna get right into providing killer information for sellers all over the world. Absolutely, thanks, CJ. Well, uh, like was mentioned, my name is Brian. I work with Ecom Dash. We are an e-commerce inventory management platform that also breaks out into the fields of order fulfillment, uh, inventory tracking, listing creation, and. Really, our goal is to be a one-stop shop for all your e-commerce needs. And our name is short for e-commerce dashboard. So as our product continues to grow and evolve, we want to be that one-stop place that you can come for all your e-commerce solutions. Um, I've been working for Ecom Dash for about two years at this point in time. So uh, that's been my direct experience in the e-commerce field. But I've been working in technology as an industry for about eight years now. Um, a lot of background in getting things online, working with various technology solutions where my skill set really comes in with Ecom Dash is being an integrated software platform. We have to work with a lot of different pieces of software out there. I know we do connect with Amazon and have a pretty powerful integration there, but we also connect to um, pretty much any other online marketplace you can think of. Um, I think, let me, let me jump in. Okay. Uh, we had someone on our, on our webinar who used the term platform agnostic and I, I love it. I mean, we are all about helping sellers survive and thrive on Amazon with, whether they're doing retail arbitrage or to have distribution agreements, whatever they have. But I believe the future is growing brands and making sure your business survives with or without Amazon. I know right now that's not really realistic because Amazon is such a Goliath, um, but platform agnostic. So what are your thoughts? And I went to your website and I saw you work with lots of other platforms. What are some of the platforms that you help sellers you know, sell their products on? So we've got a pretty extensive list of platforms, the one that are most popular for us. So Amazon, um, I'd say probably 90, 95% of our users are connected to Amazon in some way, shape or form just because of how uh, how prevalent Amazon is in the e-commerce industry. After that, we have eBay as our next popular platform. Lots of other integrations for your personal company websites, places like WooCommerce or Magento or Shopify hosting your own domain. And we also connect with marketplaces like um, Big Commerce, Sears, Etsy, Walmart.com, Jet.com, some of those new and growing players in the game. And we offer uh, a lot of different types of integration services with some of your no, not less, or less traditional e-commerce platforms, places like Groupon.com um, or let me think of one of the other ones we just rolled out here. Uh, we just rolled out an integration with Overstock to be able to push inventory balances out there. So. Um, you know, we do uh, connect to a lot of different places. And one of the cool things about Ecom Dash, one of the most powerful parts of our software is our API is open to develop against. So if there is a any type of storefront that's out there, as long as they support an API based connection, Ecom Dash can absolutely work with that storefront for you. You know, I think that's huge because, you know, our clients and your clients, they're innovators. They're, they're ahead of the curve in terms of getting into retail, ahead of the curve in terms of being an entrepreneur. And the fact that the API is sort of an open source that people can contribute and it could hook up with other other methods of doing business, I think is huge. And it's constantly improving. You know, we, we try and do that as well. I mean, I learned from our sellers, you know, every single day as to the trends in the marketplace, what's going on in Amazon and also how we can get better. Um, I want to get into some specifics. OK, and I think it's fantastic that you're on all these other platforms. Uh, but one, do you help sellers who are solely on Amazon? you know, expand onto eBay, onto Etsy, onto Shopify, you know, onto all these different platforms that you talked about. Do you kind of hold their hand and, and get their feet wet? We do, yeah. So actually one of the really cool things that you can use Ecom Dash to do. So um, to give you an idea of how that would work, if you were a seller, you've got some presence on Amazon, but that's really the only marketplace you're on and you want to expand so you can truly become platform agnostic, as you said. Um, what our software can do is our software can reach out and communicate with Amazon. We can pull in all that, all those details about your product that are already stored on Amazon into Ecom Dash. So you don't have to redo or repurpose that information. And then Ecom Dash can take those listings that you have on Amazon 
and send them out to other storefronts. So it's very easy to move your inventory from Amazon to eBay or Sears or Walmart or whichever other storefront you'd like to expand on. Um, how, you know, does that, how does that logistically work? If someone is just on Amazon, they're doing well, okay, now they want to expand. Do they have to open up their own accounts and then you feed the listings into it? Logistically, how does it work? Exactly, yeah. So before you come back to really communicate with any storefront, you would need an account with that storefront. I know you need to already have your credentials in place for Sears uh, or for Walmart or for eBay. You know, some of those storefronts are very easy to get an account set up on. eBay is a very straightforward process to become a seller on. Others are a little bit more complicated. Um, storefronts like Jet and Walmart have a pretty big validation process you have to go through. Uh, you know, a lot of that process is going to be governed by you as a seller. Um, you know, as a seller, they're going to want a lot of information from you about where you're sourcing your products from to make sure you're going to be able to meet your fulfillment commitments on time. But we do have some experience in that manner. You know, we work with a lot of sellers who have gone through that process as well, and we can absolutely provide you some guidance if you are trying to expand on a new storefront. Listen, expansion and diversity is is the key to survival long term. Um, none of us know exactly where Amazon's going to go. They're a very erratic company to do business on. Um, I want to ask you about Jet. I'm not sure if you know this or not. You know, Jet by sellers was seen as like this great hope. You know, the hope that a platform would actually treat the third party sellers with a modicum of respect and, and reliability. Um, I know they had some kind of cool things with lower prices for, you know, pick and packing and shipping based upon logistics. You know, if you were closer to the buyer or further away, um, has Jet fulfilled any of those hopes about being a little bit kinder to sellers? Well, uh, you know, it's a bit of a double-edged sword with Jet because they are definitely building their platform to build to be more seller-friendly um, than Amazon is. You know, Amazon is kind of designed to be a very buyer-friendly platform. Um, you know, part of the nature with Jet, one of the issues that our customers have that's a big problem with Jet is just starting to get traction and get through that approval process on Jet. Um, you know, they do have a very extensive approval process that's referred to as the Jet Runway. And there is essentially a list of things you have to do uh, before you can even submit your first listing to Jet. And then when you do get to the spot where you're submitting your first listing to Jet, uh, there's a Jet internal validation process. It's not quite as easy as Amazon or eBay where you can just say, hey, I've got this product for sale and it's going out there. Um, you have to submit that information over to Jet and then they're going to take their time reviewing it and then get that information out there. It, it, sounds, like, it sounds like the Jet obstacle course as opposed to a, run, a runway. Exactly. You know, it is a little bit of an obstacle course, but the cool part about that is those processes do become much faster the longer you have an account history with Jet. Um, so a lot of times we'll run into a new seller on Jet who it takes them five or six days to get their first listing to go through that processing period. But by the time they've been selling on Jet for a month, their next new listing goes out there in an hour. Uh, and that time frame just continues to reduce. So any once idea you why? Any idea? Course, well, what about the process that changes? That makes the first listing, you know, such a pain in the ass, but then future listings much easier. Well, a lot of it is just verification from Jet's side. You know, part of what they're doing is being a very seller friendly marketplace is they want to make sure that they know that you're a good and competent seller and know what you're doing in the e-commerce business so that any customers that are purchasing your product on Jet are going to have a great experience and get that product delivered um, in a way that Jet would like them to. You know, it's kind of their uh, security and validation process. They want to make sure that more people are going to come to Jet because they have a great buying experience there, which is in turn going to drive revenue for your business as a seller. Um, you know, once you've gone through that process, it's just like any other relationship. You know, uh, the first time you go out and uh, meet someone, it might be a little bit of a slow process. Conversation might be kind of awkward, but by the time you've met them three or four times, you're right into it and they're old friends. And that process very much holds true with Jet. And so they look at the nice. cross submissions and if everything looks good to go, they're more likely to give you a green so a little less of like the speed dating, instant hookup and quick breakup with Amazon and more of developing long-term relationship and reliability. Now, you know, part of that is just because of the, the way that Jet is structured as a platform. Um, unlike Amazon, Jet does not have a very um, robust backend platform. Uh, the way that you connect to Jet is only through the use of an API. So whether that's Ecom Dash or another uh, inventory management or listing control service, um, you're never really interacting directly with Jet as a seller. Um, you have to use another software to communicate to them. So it's part of a validation process, just making sure that your setup is going to work for their system and their setup is going to work with your system. All right, let's move. Let's actually move backwards to where we, we planned on starting this conversation. Tell our listeners about inventory management, the basics of inventory management, whether it's, you know, brick and mortar or online. 
and then also how you help when it comes particularly to Amazon, because most of our listeners are are deriving the majority, if not all, their income from selling on Amazon. So let's get into inventory management. Absolutely, you know, inventory management is a critical part of any um, any uh, retail business, and especially an e-commerce business. So um, I pulled up some pretty quick stats here that I was not aware of, but um, just in terms of how inventory management impacts the real world. So uh, Q2 of 2018, Mattel, huge company, you know, they're they're pretty much any toy industry. If you have kids, I'm sure you're aware of Mattel or have some of their products in your house. They actually reported a 13% loss in Q2 of 2018. And the big reason for that loss is they had inaccurate inventory management. They didn't know how many products they had, where those products were being stored at, and uh, it ended up impacting their sales. So having that information available to you in an accurate way is very critical for your business in terms of valuation and in terms of making sure you still have products available for your customers. You know, one of the uh, with the e-commerce field, it's also very important that you have that accurate information out there on your storefronts. I'm sure you run into this all the time with um, Amazon account suspensions based on oversells. It all comes back to inventory management. If your storefronts don't have accurate information, your customers are going to try and purchase products that don't exist, which is not good for anyone. Or maybe even a worst case scenario, you have products that are in your warehouse just sitting there that aren't available for sale and no one can purchase them because your storefront's not aware of that. I got to tell you also, this is this is a major problem just for cash flow. OK, I mean, smaller sellers and larger sellers, you know, you need to invest in inventory, turn it over, get the cash roll back and then reinvest in more inventory. And inventory management is, is vital to that, because if you're buying goods that are sitting on the shelves and aren't moving, you've over invested in that. You need to know about it right away so you can you can adjust your business, lower your prices, do some promotions, do something. Uh, but you need to know how much you have at all times. There's a saying in the I think it's called the personal MBA. It's a book that I love. It's got a gold cover is that um, no one. Every successful person knows their numbers. You know, you know what's in inventory, you know, your cash flow, you know, your numbers inside and out. And that allows you to make better business decisions. So I think knowing what is selling well in your inventory control and knowing what you're investing too much in is, is absolutely, absolutely vital. Um, when it comes to Amazon FBA, um, how, do, how do you guys interact with FBA, uh, especially with the problems that FBA produces? You know, you send in 10,000 units and they only log in, you know, 6,500 units. Exactly, yeah. So the connection between Amazon and Amazon FBA specifically and Ecom Dash is actually really, really cool. So we, when you set up your Ecom Dash or your Amazon account in Ecom Dash, you of course provide your seller credentials that are connected to your FBA information. And Ecom Dash actually receives inventory updates directly from Amazon regarding what's in that warehouse. So you know when you look in Ecom Dash, the numbers that are being reported by Amazon are accurate. You don't even have to think about that at all. Um, Ecom Dash also makes it really easy for you to move inventory from sources external to FBA to FBA. If you notice a product is selling through on Amazon very quickly, you're running low on stock there, our, um, our trending tools will let you know, hey, you probably need to order more of these products to get you through the next 30, 60, or 90 days, and then you're going to need to get those products over to FBA. Our internal transfer module lets you take that inventory that's st stored in your warehouse or wherever you're managing that and easily create a shipment to Amazon so they're aware that that inventory is going to be arriving. As soon as they receive that inventory and check it in, Ecom Dash gets that update automatically and says, hey, you now have 10 or 15 or 500 more products at FBA. Uh, so that part is pretty cool in terms of the automation in our system. You know, is, there, is there a reconciliation between what you're sending in and what's actually showing up? Because often there's a mistake. You send in 10,000 units and only 8,700 or 9,000 are logged in. So now your data is good, but Amazon's data is bad. And you ha what do you do to reconcile that? And that's part of what that internal transfer tool allows you to do, because that's going to show you exactly how much you ship to Amazon and exactly how much Amazon received. So if there's any difference in those two numbers, uh, that does create a little bit of a flag in Ecom Dash. Um, you know, one of the cool things that our software does is if everything checks out and is good to go, you sent 10,000 items to Amazon, Amazon received 10,000 items, you don't have to take any more action. Ecom Dash says, hey, you know, we're both talking the same language, we're both reporting the same numbers, so everything's good to go. But if you do send 10,000 items over to Amazon and Amazon only receives 9,000 items, well, Ecom Dash is aware of that. And that order is going to stay open and say, hey, you know, this order was not fully received by Amazon. What happened to that, uh, that outstanding balance? Well, I got to tell you, um, 
on the air and off the air, when Ecom Dash identifies those problems, I'm going to suggest sellers all over the world use a company called Seller Strategies International for the reconciliation issues. Um, they're really, really savvy. The principal is a super, super savvy uh, Amazon, Amazon experienced guy. Um, let's get into drop shipping, okay? And uh, the actual shipping of the products themselves. How do you help the sellers handle those issues? Yeah, so drop shipping through Ecom Dash is very, very awesome. It's a pretty powerful tool that we have that allows you to connect to uh, really any drop shipper you can find. Um, you know, I've been working here for a little while at this point and do handle a lot of drop shipping setups for our customers and have not yet run into a supplier that we were unable to support. Um, drop shipping in Ecom Dash has three big components. And one of them is the inventory management thing. It's very similar to FBA inventory with Amazon, where we're receiving information from your suppliers, letting you know how much, uh, how much of a quantity of an item you have available to sell. Um, you know, they're gonna have other sellers that are selling that item. So that information does update and change all the time. And just because they have 500 items one hour, doesn't mean they're going to have you know, any sellable quantity the next hour of that item selling through very quickly. So we can pull all that information in from your seller or from your supplier automatically. And then we'll make sure that information gets pushed along to any storefront you're listing that item on in an automated fashion. So you don't have to worry about being on top of that all the time because that is a more than a full-time job uh, with any drop shipper. Uh, the next when you're, when you're when you're managing the drop shipping and now it's across multiple platforms, right? There's always going to be, or often there's going to be a finite number of units available. Absolutely. Um, how does the software monitor that so you don't end up not being able to deliver on a shipment? It's a mm -hmm. tremendous problem on Amazon. Um, also, it triggers a lot of suspension because Amazon will reach out to drop shippers and ask for their invoices and they don't have any because they didn't purchase the inventory. So yes. also, also before we go any further, um, we handle a lot of suspension for people who engage in drop shipping. We have not had a single suspension from anybody using Ecom Dash. So, you know, as an attorney, I cover my behind first. So I can't say it's never going to happen, but I can say that out of the thousands of sellers that we have helped and the tens of thousands of sellers I've spoken to, there has never been a single drop shipper suspended who was using Ecom Dash. So I'm not saying it's an insurance policy. I'm just giving you my my picture, what we have seen. We haven't seen any problems from anybody using Ecom Dash. So, but how do you deal with that? How do you deal with drop shipping, which is very dangerous on Amazon, when you're working on you know a dozen different platforms? Yeah. So from our end, uh, Ecom Dash is actually reaching out and communicating with the suppliers um, very, very often. You can set that up so we'll reach out and check, check with the supplier as frequently as every hour to get an idea of what's up to date from their end and what inventory they have available. Now, that's pretty cool because from our end, we're checking hourly. Most drop shipping suppliers aren't updating their inventory numbers that frequently. Uh, it's pretty common to only get an inventory update actually once a day or sometimes twice a day for the ones that are really active about it. But we're going to check more frequently than they're updating just to make sure that as soon as they get that update out there, we're able to pull that information into Ecom Dash and then send that information out to your storefronts. Uh, you know, does, it work? Does, it, does Ecom Dash provide like a dashboard that, they're, that the sellers are signing into and they can see all the numbers and Absolutely. if you're getting the updates every hour, um, how long does it take for their dashboard to be updated? Yeah, so the dashboard in Ecom Dash is real time. Um, the information that you see in Ecom Dash regarding your inventory levels and uh, your product counts and your total valuation is all computed down to, uh, you know, there's usually just a few seconds in processing delay from whenever we get an update to update that dashboard. So. We try and make that information as real time as possible so you can make decisions based off that without having to wait for an update or do any mental math in your head. Um, the AutoSync is the tool in Ecom Dash that allows those inventory updates to be pushed out. And the way that works, um, from an inventory management side, we know that keeping your inventory as accurate as possible is the most critical thing to do there. So we don't operate on a scheduled basis. Uh, we don't push out syncs every hour or once a day. We push out those syncs on an on-demand basis so whenever your inventory levels of a product in Ecom Dash change for whatever reason, whether that's a sale occurs and you have less of that inventory or the drop shipper updates their inventory levels and you have more of it or you're going in and doing a manual edit, as soon as that number changes in Ecom Dash, Ecom Dash is then sending a sync out to any storefront you have connected to Ecom Dash, letting that storefront know there's a new inventory balance available. Um, in most cases, that entire process takes about 10 seconds to complete. 
So you see that inventory update come into e-commerce from your supplier. We do our processing and turn that around to the storefront very quickly. And honestly, most of the time, the process that takes the longest is the storefront actually processing that information and then updating it on their end, uh, you know, which is pretty cool because if anything happens because of an oversell in that situation, the storefronts are usually pretty understanding and say, oh, hey, we, we got the update. Sorry, we didn't get that out there in time. Um, that doesn't matter. More, I, have some more, I love I love the automation. I love the automation too. That you're getting updated hourly. It's pushed out to the dashboards. You know, within within seconds. Um, that's the wave of the future. And also, when we're dealing with suspension, when we're writing plans of action for suspended sellers, one of the things Amazon looks for are improvements. So anything you can automate to take out the risk of human error is always helpful in writing a plan of action, whether it has to do with a legal issue or not. Uh, so these are great, great solutions for sellers to adopt that you can then point out to Amazon if necessary, that you have automated this process, you've taken out the risk of human error. Um, and I think it's really great. Um, when it comes to purchase orders, I don't really get how Ecom Dash manages or helps with purchase orders when sellers are, you know, they're obtaining their inventory. What What is that function of Ecom Dash? Well, the purchase order tool is uh, pretty awesome as well. It essentially allows you to track those purchase orders from within Ecom Dash. So you have the ability in Ecom Dash to define who your suppliers are. Um, you can come in and say, you know, I've got supplier A over here and supplier one over here and supplier X all the way over there. Um, you can then associate those suppliers with any inventory you're selling through. So even if it's not a drop shipping scenario, but it's a supplier that you're working with consistently, you can say, hey, I'm getting these widgets from supplier A all the time. You can then define all the information about that supplier in Ecom Dash, their location, you know, their number, your account information with them if you ever have to call them up real quickly to address something just so it's right there on file for you. And then depending on how that supplier is um, preferring to receive that information, you can actually send that purchase order from Ecom Dash to that supplier uh, with just about two clicks of your mouse. Uh, they'll receive that information automatically. And then once that purchase order is received in Ecom Dash, you can indicate how much inventory you're receiving. And then that inventory goes right back into that auto sync process I was referring to automatically or just a few moments ago. So you'll get those inventory updates on your storefront very, very quickly. Um, you know, the the cool part about managing those purchase orders in Ecom Dash is even if your supplier is really you know, ancient, um, they don't have any technology integrations at all, even if they have an email account, we can get that purchase order off to them so you don't have to do anything outside of Ecom Dash. We can send that PO right over to them, they'll receive that information, and then once you get those orders in, we'll manage that inventory from you from there. It really provides some great oversight and bookkeeping all in one location. When you guys are helping with the purchase orders, when the products are actually paid for, now it's an invoice, how are those invoices getting back to the sellers? Are they going Ecom Dash and you're forwarding them? Are they going straight to the sellers? Is it an online type invoice? Because in invoices are absolutely vital when a seller receives like an inauthentic problem. Absolutely, yeah. So that information, once the uh, order is received, is stored directly in Ecom Dash. One of the things that we don't do uh, internally to Ecom Dash is a lot of the accounting purposes. Or a lot of accounting functionality, but we do integrate directly with QuickBooks and Xero, which are you know, two of the biggest names in the online accounting industry. And you can take those purchase orders and actually export them from Ecom Dash to QuickBooks or to Xero and create an invoice within that accounting software. Um, so you can send that right over to your accountants, track that system uh, within those bookkeeping so services. I know accounting is kind of its own game and there's uh, a lot of detail and intricacy associated with that. So we figure we leave that to people who are best with it. Well, let me ask you, if you if the sellers need not their own generated invoices, they actually need invoices from wherever they source the product. Uh, is there any problem obtaining the, the invoices from those companies? Uh, generally not. You know, the um, the information that we're sending over to that company is just a request to purchase that product. Um, generally speaking, the suppliers would email those invoices directly back to the uh, purchase to the person purchasing that product or to the company purchasing that product. Um, there's a lot of information that goes into those invoices and they are very um, very customized from business to business. So right now we haven't really stumbled on a great way to automate that coming back into Ecom Dash. I know it's one of the things we're looking for in the future. So if you're gonna come back and check back in with us in a little while, I might have a different answer for you there. But uh, for right now, that process kind of happens outside of Ecom Dash. All right, listen, have I left anything out? We covered inventory management, order management, drop shipping. Um, FBA, 
Um, the, getting platform agnostic and being on as many channels as possible to protect yourself and, and diversify yourself in case you have any problems with Amazon. Um, shipping, purchase orders, the reports. Uh, anything I forgot to ask you about? Anything you want to you want to tell our listeners? Well, you know, from my end, um, you know, the, one of the biggest things that we're doing in Ecom Dash to really add a lot of functionality is uh, our Ecom Dash App Store. Um, it's pretty cool. You're probably familiar with the concept of an App Store if you have a digital device out there. And this one's per just internal to Ecom Dash. Uh, one of the coolest things that we just came out with is we have a new app that rolled out for the uh, Amazon Selling Coach which is really awesome for the integration with Amazon because it pulls in information about your top performing products, your restocking rewards directly from Amazon, and even some information about whether you have the buy box on Amazon or not, which is you know, a huge deal from a selling perspective. So a uh, really great way to kind of integrate Ecom Dash with other services, other software platforms, or kind of things that are related to, but not directly a part of the e-commerce field. So our platform can continue to grow and meet all your needs. I know, like I mentioned at the earlier or at the beginning of the uh, little screen share webcast we have going on right now, uh, our objective is to be that one stop marketplace. So whether you need that Amazon selling coach functionality or not, it's available to you directly with any e dash. All right. OK, so let me let me drop my notes here, drop my pad so I can put something up on the screen. Um, I like putting people on the spot. How can our listeners, how can our people who watch these webinars contact you? You know, the. The, one of the biggest complaints about Amazon is there's nobody to speak with. You can't call and speak with anybody uh, that gives you information that's useful. Uh, so how could our how could our viewers contact you? Sure. So you've got a couple of methods that you can reach out and get in touch with. I got my arms up here so I can <laughs> type it right on the screen. Uh, yeah. So uh, you can always shoot us an email at support at ecom dash dot com. You know, that's one way to get in touch with us. We are very responsive to that email. Um, we generally don't wait uh, longer than a few minutes before getting back out to you on those type of issues. Uh, any social media platform that we have a presence on, you know, our team is monitoring that as well. We get direct messages on Facebook and Twitter all the time. We're more than happy to make sure those wind up in the correct hands in our company to manage that correctly. Um, once you are using the Ecom Dash software, you also have full access to our support team. Uh, we're very, very uh, passionate about being out there and being a resource for people. You know, part of the nature of being a multi-channel platform is there's a lot of intricacies to each sales channel, and sometimes it's best to just call us up and talk to us about what's going on. Um, you can always schedule a call with us, and generally you can schedule a call with us within about 15 minutes of needing a call. So we try to be very responsive to that as well. And we also have a live chat service that's available during our business hours that you can reach out to from directly within our app. So you know we're always there to hear your questions, hear your feedback, and get back out to you. Um, you know, one of the other things that's not direct communication with our company, but is becoming a great resource is we rolled out a community forum um, a few months ago, and that's starting to get some traction amongst our users. Uh, you can go there and submit feedback requests, kind of enter into discussions with other users who have uh, accomplished things in Ecom Dash or have found unique workflows or unique workarounds to certain problems that they're having. So fostering that communication is one of the things that we're very passionate about, whether it's directly with us or just amongst our user group. All right. Um, I think that's great. Email, you will get a response. They also have a chat. Go to the website, ecom-.com. Um, also, I got a couple of things that I want to talk to, uh, I want to talk about before we wrap it up. Um, number one, my 14-year-old daughter, Sam, which some of our listeners met at SCO in Seattle, and, and she'll be with me at ASD in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks. Um, it's just, she told me to say this, she wants you to smash to smash the like button and smash the share button so we get as many likes and shares. Wouldn't normally be my, my verbiage, but she says to smash that like button. Um, number two, um, if you are anywhere near Minneapolis, Midwest Ecom, it goes on this weekend. It is one of the best domestic events you can go to. Uh, this time of year is when you really need to get great information and also inspiration as you're sourcing your products and heading into Q4, which is coming up fast. Um, ASD in Vegas at the end of the month, Retail Global also in Vegas in October. Um, for, for people in the UK, we're appearing at events, uh, the Northern E-Commerce Show in uh, Manchester in November. And these are just fantastic events all over the world for sellers to not only learn, uh, but also get the inspiration that you need, the inspiration to, to continue to forge forward and continue to grow. Become platform agnostic, get on the channels, talk to e-com, dash.com about how to get on the channels. They can take your listings. All you need to do is set up the account. 
and they can feed your products through and take you on the jet runway or the jet obstacle course, whatever, however you want to refer to it. And last but not least, um, if you are shopping on Amazon and we all do, you may deny it, but you shop on Amazon as well as sell on Amazon, please use the Amazon Smiles program and please choose the Ty Lewis Campbell Foundation as your charity. T.Y. Ty Lewis Campbell Foundation. Ty was a little boy who had brain cancer. He died after an incredibly long and valiant fight. The foundation was started by his mom and dad, Cindy and Lou, and they turned this tragedy into absolute triumph by creating this incredible foundation that raises money to find better cures, to find better treatments and a cure for pediatric cancer. And they do it in a way that you can really um, appreciate and enjoy life, which is one of the things that they remind us to do through a project called the Muddy Puddles Project, where they throw this event where you have food fights and you jump in mud pits, and it's just incredible. So please shop Amazon Smiles and pick the Ty Lewis Campbell. Ty is T-Y like and thank you, Ty Lewis Campbell. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, I got to introduce you to the guys at Seller Strategies International for account reconciliation. And uh, I can't thank you enough for giving this great information. Thanks again. Uh, happy to be a part of this. I uh, love working with uh, you and your team there. So you know, reach back out whenever you have additional questions for us and look forward to work with you again in the future. Sounds great. Talk to you soon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.